I have this level set up here where you basically just have a player that can move around and I'm kind of trapped in this room, right? Obviously there's a key, there's a key counter, and there's this like rock or something that's kind of blocking my way out. And what I want to be able to do is pick up this key and then update the key counter, make the key disappear, and make the rock disappear. It's a pretty simple problem, right? But the difference is we're going to be solving this with Unity events as a way to decouple our code so you don't have so many hard references in your scripts. And let me show you what I mean. Let's say the first thing we wanted to address was when the player interacts with the key, then we want to have something happen. So let's go through our normal method. I'm going to make a new script and call this key, whatever, we'll attach it and we'll open it up. And in here I could do what's typical, right? We could do a void on trigger enter 2D. We could say if the collision dot game object dot compare tag is the player so for colliding with the player then guess what we want to do something and this is all fine right this is just how you detect collision when you have a trigger set on your box collider for an object and that's fine this is all correct but like i said before this do something involves three different game objects we have the key the rock and the text object and so up here, it might be your first instinct to say, hey, I need like a reference to a public game object for the rock. I need a reference to the text game object, right? The key text. But then you have these hard references between now these three different objects. And that doesn't really make sense. This key script shouldn't really have any understanding of what this GUI element is or what the rock is. And it shouldn't get its full game object passed to it. That would be way too cumbersome. You're getting way too much data. And it's really not necessary because what happens if one of these things goes away, then it just kind of breaks. So we're going to talk about using Unity events to solve this problem. And here's how you can do it really, really quickly. The first thing we actually want to do is import our events library. So at the top of our script here, we can say using unity engine dot events, just like that. And now when you type something like public unity event, it should come up no problem. And we could just call this something like pickup key. And then in this key object, all we basically have to do is say pickup key dot invoke, which is basically saying, hey, we're firing this event and I'll explain it to you in a minute, but anything that's listening to event is gonna perform their logic, which is gonna be updating the text and hiding the rock and key, but that's it. We don't have to have any cross references here to any other game objects or any other components. We just have an event and we fire it when some condition is met. Now events are nothing new in programming. C Sharp has had events and delegates forever, but what makes a Unity event special is that you can actually interact with it through the inspector here. So if I click on our key object, we have our key script, and now we have this Unity event that's displaying in the inspector. And right now it's just an empty list, but we basically can hit this plus button at the bottom, and you'll see this pop up. And let me explain what this is doing. We have this slot down here where it says none object, and we obviously need to pass in some sort of game object here. And until you do, this function dropdown is kind of just grayed out and disabled. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do is pass in our key game object to this slot. So I'll just click and drag it in, and you'll notice our function dropdown becomes enabled. And if we open this, you'll actually see there's a bunch of different options. And these are all the different components that are on our key object, right? We have our transform, our sprite renderer, our box collider 2D, and our key, which all match up in our inspector of our components we have, as well as just like your standard game object. These are things a game object can do, like set it active, send a message, etc. And so just to demonstrate something quick, I could make like a public void method and call this like, this is an example and save it off. And when it recompiles, if I go down to the function dropdown, I go to the key script, we now see at the bottom, this is an example method we just made, right? So you can actually invoke things through your scripts, which is really cool. And you can pass in parameters and all that stuff. All right, let's get rid of that. We don't need it. So let's go through our three use cases we were talking about before. The first one being the key. So we already passed it in. We can go to the function dropdown. We can go to game objects and then set active. And you'll notice it's just a checkbox. And we don't want to set it to active because it's already going to be. So we want to disable it. We can then hit the plus button and drag in our rock game object and do the exact same thing. Go to the function dropdown, go to game object, and go to set active, and they'll both be getting deactivated. Now I have this key text object here. If you right click on your hierarchy and go to UI, text, text mesh pro, this is what I'm using. 
and it comes with like a canvas and everything. So I have this text object, and right now I'm gonna make a new script, and I'll call this something, just for example, like key text. I'll keep it simple for the tutorial. And we'll click and drag key text on here and open it up. So in this key text component, let's say we just wanted to track like a count of how many keys we have. So maybe we wanna store an integer called key count, and then we don't need to really update, but let's say we make one public method now, say public void increment key count. And since this is like a key text component, we know this is gonna like update the text inherently. That would just make sense to do. We'll first start off by saying key count plus plus, and then we actually need to import TextMesh Pro, the uh, library. So at the top, we can say using TM Pro, and then right under the key count, we could say get component. And then in angle brackets, we'll say text mesh pro UGUI and close it off. And we'll just say dot text is equal to, and then in a formatted string, keys with the key count. And this is just gonna mix text with our variable, so it'll display this integer. Okay, but now we just have this nice, simple script here. We don't need to go back into our key script and then make a reference to this or anything like that. It's all decoupled. We can just go back to our Unity event on our key game object, add a plus, drag in our key text, go to the function dropdown, we'll find our key text script we just made, and look, increment key count. Because it's public, we have access to it. We select that, and now when we play the game, we can walk into our key, both things disappear, and our key incremented. And now we have three different game objects all interacting with the same event, completely decoupled from each other, and not having any hard references, not having to reference each other's scripts or game objects and pass them through to each other. It's, it's a mess. So this is a much cleaner way of doing things. I think that's apparent. Uh, it's a quick little tip for you guys. And I hope you should start using this in your games going forward. It's a little bit of a more you know, intermediary level skill. It's something that's really helpful in all your games. So, And if I do it one more time for you guys, actually, you'll see when I pick up the key this time, it tells you to subscribe right now.